What's up, loners? We're back again with episode number 59 coming at ya. 59. <laughs> Roll that intro. This is the real reason I stay with Brian is because no one else thinks I'm funny but him. And I get off on that. Uh, now all of a sudden you know what you are. I don't actually think you're funny. Well, at least you pretend that I'm funny. <laughs> I'm just you kidding. Give you give me that. You are funny. You're definitely funnier than me, that's for sure. That's true. Yeah. Someone has to bear the burden. Whatever. You know, my... Uh, my knees hurt a lot, you know, because... Uh, you don't carry the weight of anything. <laughs> like anything. <laughs> you know what? Why couldn't you let me say the joke? <laughs> Whatever, anyway. Wait, what were you going to say? I actually want to know. My knees hurt a lot because from carrying the weight of this humor of the, on the re- in the relationship. It's, never mind. Whatever. All right. So today <laughs> we're going to do a video. It has to do because... Recently, um, Biden actually just passed this thing called the Willow Project. That would be uh, Alaska pipeline, like oil drilling, right? So pretty much they would, uh, it would be a connection from Alaska drilling to the states here. Where we, I mean, they are the states technically, but you know what I mean? The mainland. Yeah. Just kidding. I don't actually know. What Um, what does Alaska call us over here? Probably mainland. Probably same as Hawaii. They call them like mainland. Yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, they probably don't. Like a lot of locals over in those places probably think like they don't want to be associated with the mainland. Like over I don't here. blame them. I don't want to be associated with <laughs> this either. <clears throat> but um, so Linda was actually looking at more of the details of st- statistically what some scientists were saying that it I could mean, cause. Yeah. Apparently this could make global warming like irreversible. I don't know the facts. This isn't like my strongest subject if you will i just know a lot of people are not happy about it there are a lot of people who are for like i understand why people are saying this is a good thing but i don't know personally with my little knowledge i feel like this is just like a disaster waiting to happen yeah like you i think can't the, even imagine how many oil spills are gonna be that is also true yeah. and i understand having jobs i understand like not depending on other countries for oil for however long but I don't think we're going to see the benefits for many years. And I don't think that they'll be worth it compared to the giving up, like, yeah, I hurting just the earth. I also know that the people making these choices aren't even going to be alive to see the repercussions Yeah, of a lot of it. I mean, they might. I don't know, but I, d- I doubt it. Yeah. But again, this is not my strong suit. Everyone has an opinion. Um, yeah. And we'll probably learn some things from the video, just, too. I do it. I do want to say, though, I think it's weird that it hasn't been a huge topic of discussion amongst politics. Like, it kind of, like... It got, was when Trump was in, right? And he was, like, getting out. Yeah, but it still wasn't, like, a huge topic. Yeah, because... And a lot of... Uh, a lot of, the like, push Biden was trying to enforce. Well, climate. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like... But I remember, like, Trump was going to... Before he left the office, I think he was trying to take like uh, national parks and drill on national parks, remember? Yeah, but I think we all kind of knew that wasn't going to happen. But I still just can't believe like that he would even propose that. That's yeah, that's, th- just, that's like sacred land to yeah, where like you can is. actually just go and well, there's a lot it. of sacred land too in Alaska, but I don't live there. I can't have a yeah. huge opinion on that. Yeah, I just feel bad for the people who do live there and are against it because that fucking sucks. <laughs> like yeah. that would suck. I know that the the only good thing that'll come out of it is but jobs. Yeah. Yeah, but I think only like three hundred of them are gonna be like permanent jobs, which in the grand scheme is not that many jobs. Yeah. And yeah, this is like the biggest oil project on federal land like ever in yeah. our country. So we shall see. Um, I'm hoping that it it doesn't affect the earth as much as they're saying it will it's going to i know i just i'm hoping that because obviously if we can become dependent on ourselves for oil and stuff like that then yeah obviously that would be better but i don't know i just don't i guess i look at things from like 
a different perspective than like a business perspective because yeah i don't i don't care in my opinion like i don't care that it's going to make us less dependent on other parts of the world because as humans we're supposed to be able to depend on each other but i also know it's a whole another topic yeah, of discussion yeah because yeah. when money comes into it and power comes into you it you take away most of it humanity takes away with that. everything else yeah the greater fucking picture yeah um so that's it's true yeah but um we should probably let's get into anyway it. Yeah, yeah let's get into this so this is called how the united states got hooked on foreign oil and it's by cnbc so yeah. let's see how it goes for over four decades, every American president has pledged energy independence. It was supposed to strengthen us geopolitically, make us more secure, and boost our economy. The United States will not be dependent on any other country for the energy we need. To this nation will never use more foreign oil. America must get to work producing more energy. No security for the United States in further dependence on foreign oil. To replace this sounds just like a bunch of stuff that goes on now where they promise things it's and propaganda. they just say something that sounds nice and then nothing ever changes with it. That's yeah. the yeah, that's like the reoccurring thing. That's what I'm saying. That's that what you see. Look at how long ago they were saying certain things like we're not going to be dependent and then we just went and I mean probably a big part of the Afghanistan war I probably was has to do with oil and stuff like that the n it had to do with nothing but oil that's what i'm saying and then they made <laughs> they it look mean, like yeah. um, there were attacks when there really weren't even yeah. attacks I mean, supposedly that's what they were saying yeah i know that, but i don't know who knows but i i do believe that greed ignites the flame for doing things like that yeah i mean who was it pat tillman who's that the guy who after 9 11 fought he quit football to go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because he was saying that the war was illegal and that they all of a sudden were saying he was killed in friendly fire. Yeah. When autopsy reports proved otherwise. But that's another conspiracy theory in your cuckoo if you believe that our, well, our own military could ever have different interests in what they're telling yeah, us. Yeah. 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 More than 75% of our oil import. We've talked and talked about the need to end America's century-long addiction to fossil fuels. Now, for the first time in 65 years, we are a net exporter of energy. Well, not quite yet. But it's close. <laughs> By 2020, for the first time since 1953, the United States is predicted to become a net energy exporter, meaning it will export more fossil fuels than it imports. What has hmm. happened in the U.S. shale oil industry, it's never happened on this scale or this fast anywhere in the history of oil before. People will tell you that it's been a big deal, but actually they're way understating what an enormous deal this has been for the U.S. Our status as the world's largest um, largest producer of oil and this whole belief in the in the shale revolution is leading to American energy independence depends on an ongoing influx of capital. It's, it's kind of a Ponzi scheme. For almost a century, America was the largest oil producer in the world. So how did we get hooked on foreign oil? Before we go any further, it's important to understand what energy sources are available and how they're consumed. The two major energy sources in the U.S. are petroleum, including crude oil and refined products, and natural gas. The two make up nearly two-thirds of our total consumption. Coal and nuclear power's role? That's diminishing. And renewable energies like solar and wind? They're growing. But together, there's still a small segment of our energy consumption making up only the remaining third. So how is it used? 92% of petroleum is used for transportation. Yeah. The majority of natural gas is used to heat our homes, generate electric power, and fuel our industries. I, I mean, I do think that there's probably alternatives they could use, but then they would have to backtrack probably for what they've already set up. And it would just take so much effort to go and change the way things have been for so long. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like a band-aid effect here they constantly are putting band-aids over stuff instead of saying yeah. okay let's just completely start from scratch or t to some degree from yeah. scratch but also do you, so let us know where you're from but have energy costs like gas and everything gone up like a lot in the past year 
because here um Have they? yeah the gas this year was literally double the amount that it was last year so it it doubled doubled <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say something else, but yeah, I repeated myself. It, yeah, but yeah, it literally doubled in price. So, like, if you had a bill for 200 bucks last year for heating, it was, like, $400 this year. Why is that, though? Energy costs, I guess, even for the bigger people. But I heard in the UK, I think something similar happened. Man. Have we just been using our gas more, you think? Or did it really spike that much? It because, did spike that much. Because it... It's been a lot colder. With that too, but also that's why companies like small businesses were saying they can't pay the utilities because they yeah, doubled in price. That's why. Like imagine for a restaurant. That's super expensive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The story of American oil begins in 1859 in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Small amounts of oil had seeped from the ground for a long time, but no one knew how to extract it. Until Edwin Laurentine Drake, a former conductor, was hired. After many failed attempts, he finally struck gold, black gold. So over the next couple of decades, major oil finds in Texas, California, and Oklahoma contributed to U.S. emergence as a major economic power. The 1901 Spindle Top Gusher in Texas nearly tripled U.S. oil production. Henry Ford's Model T invention in 1908, the first mass-produced car, made America the most motorized country in the world. Other industrialized countries like France, Britain, and Germany were ways oh, behind. It was World War I that turned oil into a strategic commodity because a war that began with people riding horses ended with airplanes, tanks, trucks, and motorcycles. In 1919, the U.S. Geological Survey estimated that the U.S. would run out of oil within 10 years. The great Texas oil industry has a hard-fisted history of company feuds and... But that fear was short-lived. Regulatory changes and technological breakthroughs doubled U.S. production. And that wasn't the last time the oil industry defied the odds. By World War II, America was responsible for 60% of world production. Six out of Damn. every seven barrels used by Great Britain, China, Soviet Union, and the rest We're of the Allied yeah, forces came from the U.S. Yeah. Conclusion to the historic Yalta Conference. As a In February 1945, on his way home from the Yalta Conference, President Franklin Roosevelt met with Saudi King Ibn Saud for the first time. Then representing Saudi Arabia comes King Ibn Saud. This conference was no doubt among the most important of these meetings and presumably centered on the vastly important question of oil. The potential American and the reason for that meeting was a recognition that major new oil reserves had been discovered in Saudi Arabia, and particularly coming out of the experience of the war, a sense that the United States needed to develop a relationship with this nation, Saudi Arabia, with which there had really been no connection before. Roosevelt had two wheelchairs with him. He was paralyzed from polio and King Ibn yeah. Saud's legs were giving out. So Roosevelt actually gave King Ibn Saud one of his wheelchairs. One, two, three, From what I heard, Franklin was actually a pretty decent president. Um, I don't know too much in detail, but I heard he was one of the better ones. I thought Jimmy Carter was a good one because he was actually trying to move us forward with mm -hmm. like move away from natural gas and stuff like that. But then he started the whole conflict with Iran, I believe. Zero idea, yeah. because history is <laughs> one of the most fucking boring things. It is not. History no, is so no, interesting. No, no. I say that as an opinion. No, I, I know, I know. I, it, for yourself, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I, I, can I, only, <clears throat> I can only absorb so much for so long. Yeah. A lot of times I, I overthink when I look at things like... I was mentioning to her yesterday because I was watching uh, Dunkirk. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's about like World War II and it's about like how the British uh, soldiers were fighting in Normandy. And I was just like, wow, like we haven't experienced something like this on our homeland. That must be a crazy experience, like not a good one. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Coming out of World War II, demand in the U.S. started to really take I mean, off with the building of sub. I think you mean more in our lifetime, too, though, right? Or do you mean in general? In general. Uh. Burbs, uh, with motor cars and so forth. And it was right after World War II that the United States moved into this position of being a importer of oil rather than the world's most important exporter. One, two, three, hold. 
The economy was booming in America after the war, and consumption of oil and natural gas grew with it. In the 50s and the 60s, a massive pipeline network for natural gas was built throughout the United States. But for oil, worries about hitting a peak in production were spreading. Fueling the uncertainty, King Hubbard, geophysicist at Shell, predicted that the U.S. would run out of oil by 1970. You know, you'd set up the economy over the previous 80, 70, 80 years to use a lot of oil because oil had been, U.S. had been the number one producer in the world. You had abundant U.S. oil to use and nobody had really thought about alternatives or efficiency. Uh, it was in many ways just a given that you had cheap, available U.S. oil. In 1960, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela formed the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC. When mm. OPEC was formed, hardly anybody oh, yeah. noticed. What had happened in the late 1960s, there was really a glut, a surplus of oil, and the oil industry cut the price, and they cut it not once, but twice, and that's when oil was very cheap, a, a dollar or two a barrel. And that really reduced the revenues of the oil-producing countries. And a few of them got together, led by Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, and formed this organization called OPEC. Within a decade, member countries nationalized their petroleum industries, brought in massive revenue, and became an increasingly dominant force in the world. Together, they represented 80% of the world's crude exports. The Israelis broke through, and later in the day, the 1973 Arab-Israeli war led to an oil embargo by OPEC. It was not until the Mideast oil embargo in the fall of 19... Member countries put a sudden halt on oil exports to the U.S., yeah. and that caused a frenzy. Gasoline stations. I remember hearing about this. Um, they, they mentioned it, too, recently when there was a point when I forgot exactly how to explain it, what was going on, and our prices went up. A lot. They were saying a shortage. Remember, it happened recently, and our prices shot up in gas. It was a similar thing in the 70s here. Oh, I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. I was, was saying it, it repeated weren't itself. Weren't they saying that was like COVID related or something because exports and shit were not? Yeah. So it's different. What is, uh, sorry, I zoned out for a second, but I'm. Um, what are they saying that... Um, when the Arab-Israeli war started, they yeah. made an embargo so that they wouldn't take any more oil gas until... Gas us. Yeah. Or like I don't get it. Why we wouldn't is there, take why are, any gas from them. Oil. Okay, from but them. we still were. We still had our own gas, though. It seemed like we still had a ton. I think we were heavily importing. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it caused a shortage. Okay, so this is when he predicted that like we're gonna run out of oil. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And then all it of a sudden happened. we became dependent. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I am slow. Ran dry. Airlines cut back flight schedules. Factories were forced to close. Prices exploded from three to nearly twelve dollars a barrel in three months. Damn. That's seventy-two dollars a barrel in today's dollars. The U.S. dependence on foreign oil was a reality. That created really the crisis and panic in the world oil market. It led to gas lines in the United States. It led to prices shooting up and it led to a huge political uh, battle within the United States. And part of the response... The President Nixon told the country of Project Independence, the plan to make the United States entirely independent of foreign sources of energy by the end of this decade. Was President Nixon declaring what he called Project well, Independence, happen. which was this theme that the U.S. would somehow become energy independent again as it once had been. energy needs without depending on any foreign. A lot of programs were launched, uh, big programs, a lot of regulations were put in, uh, into effect, for instance, automobile fuel efficiency standards. But basically, the U.S. seemed destined to just continue to import more oil, and that's mostly what happened uh, in the decades <laughs> that followed. Yeah. Congress mandated a speed limit on highways and passed the Energy Policy and Conservation Act of 1975. Wait, it led there to were no greater... speed limits before <laughs> No way. I got to look that up if there were no speed limits before that. That's right. insane. They probably just trusted that nobody yeah. was going crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sorry. Fuel efficiency and developments in renewables. The late 70s and 80s were overrun yeah. by turmoil and pervasive anxiety. Yeah. 
at home, the fear over peak oil was everywhere. At the same time, consumption of natural gas was growing faster than production. From 1986 to 2000, net imports as a share of natural gas consumption quadrupled. By the early 2000s, the question became less about who was going to supply the ever-increasing U.S. appetite for fossil fuels and more about new consumer markets. Suddenly China emerged from communism, had a very rapidly growing economy and had a very rapid oil demand growth and that essentially began to exceed the ability of the global oil system to supply enough oil. And of course what happens if you've got too much demand mm. and not enough supply is the price got driven very, yeah. very high for oil. We went in 2008 to $150 a barrel. The price today is about 60 to 70. So if you think about it, oil prices would double at that time and it caused a major issue that ultimately became part of the global financial crisis that occurred in 2009. It was during this time a group of risk-taking yeah. entrepreneurs saw an opportunity. In particular, a man named George Mitchell in Texas, who for about a decade and a half had had his company seen, is there some way to, to get, at, initially it was to get gas, not oil, out of shale rock. What had happened is the oil that flows easily had been produced and you were left with the oil that's trapped in very tight formations and there needed to be discovered a way to to, to produce that oil. They combine two existing technologies. First is horizontal drilling, essentially drilling straight down and then turning at an angle to target part of the shale formation. The second is hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. This involves pumping water, sand, and chemicals at high pressure into shale formations to fracture the rock, allowing oil and gas trapped inside oh, to flow. Suddenly the U.S instead of being short of gas, was actually starting to have a lot of gas. And in, indeed, the question was starting to become, is the U.S. going to be not an importer of natural gas, but an exporter? And then it got applied to oil and uh, the impact. I understand money and everything, fine. But like, when you go through a like shortage crisis, pretty much, because you're dependent on exports, and then the second you have a solution, you're like, cool, now we can go export this to other... Why don't you just conserve it for your country? Because... And keep the I prices mean, down. And sh and well, obviously, because they'll make a lot more money if they also sell it to other places that yeah, need it. Yeah, but it's... I don't know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I but, what you're saying. I, I mean, I obviously don't know the... Um, Logistics. Yeah, like, I don't know how much oil they can get <laughs> with fracking versus, like... Like, I don't, I don't know if they're like, yeah, this is going to last us for the next hundred years. Or if it's like, no, oh, this will get us through the next 20 years or so or the next 10. Years. Like, I don't know what the logistics are, like you were saying. So, well, I mean, obviously, if we think about it now, look at what Biden is doing. So that means that we need more supply. Well, again, he doesn't want to depend on exports. So whatever. we're in 2023. This is obviously over 20 years ago now. So my point is like. <laughs> If you know that we don't want to depend on other places, why are you now selling it? It's annoying. It's like... Yeah, I mean, I know. What's your... I don't, I don't know. It's money. I also am, know very minimal about this, so... Has been enormous. From an outside and perspective. And I would say that the impact has also been an enormous surprise. From 2007 to 2017, natural gas production increased by more than 40%, and prices dropped from $9 to $2.5 per BTU. Meanwhile, crude oil production went from 5 to over 9 million barrels a day. The U.S. dropped its imports of crude by more than 30%. For the first time in decades, energy independence yeah. was a possibility. Seriously, but still kind of jokingly, there aren't many places in the United States that you can't drill a well and not find natural gas. What came next? We'll take a look at the shale revolution in another video. I felt wonderful. I mean, they mm. sold it as uh, the new Saudi Arabia of the United States, Western Pennsylvania. Mm. And we'll explain how big oil companies missed out on a huge opportunity. The fact that things have changed so dramatically in a decade is a testament to the power of this thing called the shale revolution. I just question how sustainable it is. It's, it was almost industrial waste, That's if not hazardous to. waste. It's, it's a shame that it had to come down to us yeah. doing it. We, would, we were preferring that a state agency would have done that or 
you know, when we ask for help, maybe somebody would have looked into it a little bit better. Damn. Huh. I mean, that was informative, definitely. It was. I just wish I knew a little bit more yeah, yeah. about... W like, what was going on and stuff? Yeah, I just don't feel like I have much clarity. On yeah. Me. It's like one day we're fine, the next day we're not. You know, it just seems like it happened so quickly. Yeah, the thing I think is uh, the people in power here, if they are, if they underestimate a situation and they get caught with like their, I don't want to say like a derogatory term, but you know what I mean. They get like caught like with their pants down or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. You know what I mean? though. Yeah. And then they like, they never are honest with the people saying like, this is the X, Y, and Z because we messed up. They're always like try to cover it up to be like well this is it's for the better like this is blah blah, blah. you know I what mean, i mean yeah they were selling that it, we were energy independent while they were exporting look how long or, they've been sorry, saying while importing look how long they've been saying that we were going to get to that point uh, i promise you i do not care where our oil is coming from i but, think but it's the ethics behind yeah. why you're yeah. doing this or that yeah i think um, maybe we should look into another video too similar to this but what is it the effects it has on the earth well i hope you enjoyed that one that one was informative and <laughs> learned okay, something well yeah <laughs> we're done <laughs> um we might i think an interesting topic would be to see how parts of the world are dealing with climate change and what steps they're taking that'd be an interesting thing if you think it's a, a good idea thing though if the climate change doesn't affect like it's not just gonna affect th the there's United not like States, one yeah. country that's no like, i know we're I know. good no i'm just <laughs> saying like what steps certain countries are taking and how they view it compared to us I understand. Yeah. It's just it just doesn't work out when only certain parts of the world are taking things seriously and other parts of the world are like Well, especially one of the biggest countries in the world. I love my country so but <laughs> All right. Anyway. We hope you enjoyed guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Jump over to the vlog channel too. All right. Yeah. Do Peace that. loners. Bye. Thanks for watching.